Great news! This is the new Dacia Sandero, a reasonably priced car without gadgets that nobody wants. What more could you ask for? I'll ask for your subscription and a thumbs up, but that's just me making a living on YouTube. What does it mean a car is reasonably priced? You can buy a new Dacia Sandero for as little as 8,490 euro. Not this one, obviously, as this is the Sandero Stepway Comfort with a few extras. But if you really want the most bang for your buck, you can drive away from the showroom in a new Super Mini, which is the size of a 20-year-old compact car. I know what I'm talking about because I used to own a Peugeot 306. It was slightly smaller than the current Dacia Sandero and it cost roughly the same. The difference is that Dacia has much more equipment as standard than the Peugeot did two decades ago. You get ABS, ESP, tire pressure monitoring sensors, e-call emergency system that's, that calls for emergency if you have a crash, a USB port, side airbags, etc. It's not because Dacia loves its customers, but because most of these items are now either mandatory or will help the car get a decent Euro NCAP score. At the time of filming this review, the car has not been given an official crash test score, but the previous Sandero got 4 out of 5 stars in 2013. What's the price of this test car? And why is it so expensive? Well, this is the Sandero Stepway Comfort with a 90 horsepower TCE petrol engine and a manual gearbox six speed. It starts just below 13,000 euro, which is still very reasonable. However, this car has things like rear power windows, sat nav, climate control, keyless access and ignition, reversing camera, height adjustment for the driver's seat, blind spot monitoring. Together, all this adds up to about 15,000 euro. A similarly equipped Renault Clio costs about 2,000 euro more. The Clio gets more stuff as standard and some of its features are unavailable on the Dacia. Meanwhile, in the Sandero, you can skip many of the items that are standard on the Clio, hence the price can be much lower. Even if you go for the mid-level trim and a more powerful engine, you are still buying a decently equipped Super Mini for the price of an A-segment car. So, does the Dacia Sandero have any downsides? Paradoxically, options. The better you spec it, the closer you're getting to the Clio level and you're still not getting the Clio quality. The seats are uncomfortable and there's just no going around it. There is no lumbar support adjustment. At least you have height adjustment, which may be optional in some markets. Uh, and I recommend you consider it if it's optional. There is no seatbelt height adjustment. So if the seatbelt cuts your neck, you have to adjust the seat height. And that's the only way around it. The engine, even if you go for the 90 horsepower motor, is for very relaxed driving. Try not to overtake anything other than a tractor because you're going to put yourself and others in danger. From 80 to 120 km per hour, the Sandero accelerates almost as slow as from 0 to 100 km per hour. There is a slightly more powerful and a fraction of a second quicker version with factory installed LPG, so maybe that's the way to go. How is it to drive? More or less like my Peugeot 306 20 years ago. It's average by today's standards, but you're not buying a Dacia for refinement. It's neither especially quiet nor loud inside. The suspension is okay on bumps, but don't expect the levels of comfort like you get in the C4 Cactus, which has hydraulic bump stops. The steering is light. The gearbox is sufficiently precise. Headlights. In the press release, Dacia boasts that the new Sandero has LED headlights as standard, but just like in the Hyundai Tucson I reviewed recently, also here there is a manual level adjustment and this means less brightness 
than some xenon headlamps, although they are definitely brighter than halogen headlamps used in the previous generations. Also, low beams are LED, but high beams remain halogen. It's a similar situation in the Clio, where you have manual adjustment for the headlight level, albeit the Clio gets full LED headlights. The main benefit of LEDs here is that they consume less power and therefore put less strain on the stop and start system. Some of you may have already spotted a roof rack in the external shots, like it's often the case with roof racks, also this one made a lot of wind noise, which was noticeable at speeds as low as 50-60 km per hour. So with the beauty shots done, I decided to turn it back into roof rails. I hope you'll forgive me for not doing a live demo, but it's freezing cold. Trust me, it just takes a couple of minutes to unscrew four screws and then to just place the aluminium rails across and screw them back on. And then you're all set to put on ski mounts or a roof box on top. A neat feature. Cockpit of the new Dacia Sandero is interesting. Don't worry, the analog dials are still here and the central display appears only on some trim levels. The steering wheel is straight out of the new Clio. There is even cruise control. Radio is still operated with a joystick behind the steering wheel though. The instrument cluster is easy to read. There is a small digital display between the dials showing basic information. This test car gets keyless access and ignition. The start button is so low and deep it's hard to notice it. But there is a prominent phone holder and a USB port right above it. I recall the VW Up having a similar inbuilt phone cradle. Also, earlier Fiat offered a kind of detachable sat-nav mount. I like that it will hold pretty much any phone and I can sort of twist it, uh, rotate it, adjust it to get the orientation right. But on the negative side, it does feel flimsy and I imagine it's going to break off in a couple of months. But that's not all. Why do I need a smartphone holder since I have a large display with either factory satnav or if i don't want to use factory satnav i've got apple carplay and android auto and since i have apple carplay and android auto why do i need the holder here and the usb here since i can put the phone down there where by the way is another usb port however this second one doesn't allow me to connect to apple carplay or android auto so i have to drag the cable from top to bottom brilliant. Also, the phone holder is too close to the instrument cluster, so your phone may obstruct visibility or you'll poke it every now and then. To make things worse, the holder is integrated with the screen, so if you don't get the screen, you have to get your own phone holder. The infotainment system is fairly simple to use. Besides displaying maps from your phone, its main job is to give you access to car settings. For example, I can finally set the car to lock as I leave, but it won't open as I approach, something that annoyed me greatly in earlier Renaults. By the way, yesterday the button to unlock the car on the passenger side froze. I think sensors built into the door handle are more reliable in adverse weather conditions. Press cars in Poland are often high spec, hence the automatic climate control with the same dials like you'll find in the new Clio. Below is a place for your bits and bobs, or your phone if you don't have a phone holder, there is a second USB port and a 12 volt socket. The glove box is very deep. This model gets an armrest attached to the driver's seat, but there is an optional armrest with storage. It comes with electric parking brake. The cup holders are a good size. There are also average size door bins. In the back, the legroom and the headroom is decent. There are door pockets and that's about it. The seat belts are in special guides so they don't get stuck behind the seats when you fold and unfold the backrests. Doors don't cover the sills, so on a day like today, you have to be careful not to get your trousers dirty. The boot volume is 328 liters. You can get a double floor. This car gets an optional mini spare. Now, that's unavailable if you go for the LPG model. There are two shopping bag hooks on either side. The load lip 
is high and unprotected. So in a couple of years, when you're looking to buy this second hand, you'll easily spot who used their Sandero to carry a lot of heavy stuff and who drove it only to church on Sundays. Prices, as I said in the beginning, start at the A segment car level. So if you want more car for less money, the Sandero is an interesting proposition. However, as you add more options, it becomes harder to justify certain roughness around the edges because for not much more, you can get better cars, which get Sandero options as standard. And what do you think about the new Dacia Sandero? Would you buy one instead of a Renault Clio or a Toyota Yaris? Let me know in the comment section below. If you like my sarcastic, down-to-earth and possibly mildly amusing car reviews, join me every Friday at 3 p.m. Central European time and don't forget to subscribe and like this video as it helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.